Our sermon text is the Gospel for the Festival of the Reformation. Grace, mercy, and peace be to you from God our Father, and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. And from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven suffers violence, and the violent take it by force. For all the prophets and the law prophesied until John. And if you are willing to receive it, he is Elijah who is to come. He who has ears to hear, let him hear. Thus far our text. What does it mean for the kingdom of heaven to suffer violence? There is the obvious kind of violence caused by the devil and his children when they seek to suppress the gospel and persecute the church. But there is another kind of violence, one that proceeds from faith. The sinner has no right to claim the gospel for himself, and yet the gospel is meant for the sinner. Every time the sinner comes to God in repentance, he must wrestle with his own unworthiness. And he overcomes his unworthiness by faith. For faith trusts the promises of the gospel. And this, so to speak, unworthy seizure of the gospel is a kind of violence which proceeds from faith. Our Lord Jesus Christ says, From the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven suffers violence, and the violent take it by force. The word here, violence, does not necessarily mean to harm. It means to force. Someone who is forced to do something is not free to choose. When sinners, by faith, seize the gospel for themselves, they force the gospel, so to speak. For the law declares them unworthy of the gospel, but faith seizes the gospel despite the law. This is the attitude of the tax collectors and sinners who, from the time of John the Baptist, kept coming to Christ for grace. These wrestled with their shame and overcame it by faith. <coughs> this is written for our comfort. It is, as our Lord Jesus Christ says in Matthew chapter 9, those who are well have no need of a physician, but those who are sick. For I did not come to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. In other words, the gospel is for the unworthy. If it were otherwise, it would not be the gospel. As St. Paul writes to the Romans, saying, If by grace then it is no longer of works. Otherwise, grace is no longer grace. The point is that the less worthy you are, the more is the gospel for you. This is reflected in the small catechism concerning the Lord's Supper, where we confess that he is truly worthy and well prepared, who has faith in these words, given and shed for you for the remission of sins. The Lord's Supper, like absolution, and like the gospel itself, is intended to comfort the sinful.
Now, whoever is ashamed of his sin and desires to be free of it through Christ shows by this desire that he has saving faith. Likewise, he who fears that his faith is too weak and yet wishes that he had faith in Christ to be saved shows by this desire that he has saving faith. For these are the words of Scripture from 1 Corinthians chapter 12. No one can say that Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. And from Matthew chapter 5. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be filled. No one can love the Christ. No one can wish to be righteous, except he who has faith, which is the work of the Holy Spirit. He who wishes he had faith, has faith. He who wishes he were righteous is justified. Because to want the gospel is a fruit of the gospel and evidence of a living faith in Christ. This teaching, that the gospel is for the unworthy, is the essence of the Reformation. For this, according to the small called articles, is the first and chief article that Jesus Christ, our God and Lord, died for our sins and was raised again for our justification, according to Romans 4.25. This doctrine of scripture is opposed to the idolatry of the papacy, where salvation is the reward for those who work for it. For the lie of the papacy is that mere faith is not enough. One must still work off the debt of his sin. And even the pagan can work his way into heaven without faith. But Luther himself wrestled with the gospel. Unable for a time to reconcile the knowledge of his sin with the promise of salvation. And yet, he won that competition, not by some great insight or special knowledge or strength of character, but by faith in the plain words of Scripture, which promise in the words of Ephesians chapter 2, By grace you have been saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest anyone should boast. As Christians, we know our sins, at least in part. We know that we are unworthy of God's forgiveness. The beauty of the gospel is that it is given for the unworthy. We are daily called to wrestle with the gospel, to force it to help us, and to bend our wayward consciences to the clear promises of Scripture. For by grace you have been saved, through faith. Amen. The peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. Eight in, eight.